While waiting for his wife Nuenakata to give birth, Lord Daigo recalls the day he made a deal with the twelve demons in the Hall of Hell, choosing to follow the path of evil in exchange for power. The demons collect their payment when his first son is born. The child is born without limbs, facial features, or skin. The baby is set adrift in the river and left to its fate. Sixteen years later, he is now a young man, traveling alone, wearing prosthesis made by Dr. Jukai. While hunting a sludge-like demon, he encounters Dororo, a young petty thief being beaten by three men who Dororo cheated out of their goods. The demon attacks and devours the guys, but the young man uses blades embedded in his prosthetic arms to defeat it. Following the demon's death, the man's missing skin reappears, and lightning splits a demon's statue in the Hall of Hell. Meanwhile, Dago's second son Tahamaru returns home after hunting, but his mother still pines for her first son. Dororo accompanies the young man who seems to be unable to see, hear, or talk. However, he has excellent sword skills, superhuman strength, and the ability to detect friendly or unfriendly beams by the color of their souls. Dororo takes the young man to a village run by a beautiful woman named Bundai and offers to slay a local monster which rings a pilgrim bell. While there, they meet the blind monk known as Biwa Hoshi, who can also detect people's souls. They discover Bundai is actually a demon who has been eating travelers. After a long and intense fight, the young man slays the demon. The monster reappears, ringing its bell, and a villager explains it is the spirit of the first being the villagers killed. The young man reveals his name Hiyakamaru to Dororo and the monk. As Bundai's statue in the Hall of Hell gets struck by lightning, Hiyakamaru regains his central nervous system, thus regaining the ability to feel pain. Meanwhile, Daigo is told the Sakai clan appears to be preparing for war. Many years ago, Jukai Sensei, a doctor, found Lord Daigo's abandoned and deformed infant on a riverbank. He took the child home and made special prostheses for him so he could move about and appear normal. Six years later, the doctor gave him the name Hiyakamaru. After the kid killed a lizard demon and his right leg was magically returned to him, Jukai realized that although the boy attracted demons, his body parts had probably been stolen by demons. The doctor inserted swords into Hiyakamaru's prosthetic arms before the young man left to travel the land alone. Dororo chats with a girl, while Hiyakamaru stands outside, experiencing the feeling of rain for the first time. Suddenly, Hiyakamaru detects a demon's sword and rushes off. He encounters a man wielding the sword and only manages to defeat him by trapping the sword in his prosthetic leg. Dororo goes to retrieve the leg, but is pulled back to its owner when he touches the sword. The girl finds her brother Tanasuki and takes him home, but he is only interested in regaining the sword. Meanwhile, Hiyakamaru disarms Dororo. But Tanasuki seizes the sword again and attacks Hiyakamaru. This time, Hiyakamaru kills him and breaks the sword, which returns his ears to him. The next morning, in the Sake territory, Hiyakamaru encounters Mio, but he collapses from his wounds. The travelers stay with Mio and a group of orphan children at an abandoned temple, while Mio works at night serving the Sake troops as a prostitute. Meanwhile, Biwa Hoshi finds a better place for them, however, it is inhabited by a demon. Despite his wounds still healing, Hiyakamaru goes to fight it. Biwa Hoshi is concerned. Hiyakamaru's white aura is starting to show hints of demon red. They encounter the Andlian larvae-like demon, which bites off the lower half of Hiyakamaru's real leg, leaving him screaming in agony. Biwa Hoshi heads back to Mio's camp with Hiyakamaru. His leg is half gone, but his voice has returned. He slowly adjusts to using his hearing and his voice with the help of Mio. They become drawn to each other and the red in his soul fades. Although only partially recovered, Hiyakamaru returns to kill the demon. He succeeds in killing the demon and his leg heals. However, when he and Dororo return to the temple, they find Mio mortally wounded and Dago troops murdering the orphans because they believe Mio is a Sakai spy. Enraged by the attack on Mio, Hiyakamaru goes berserk, slaughtering all the Dago troops until Dororo intervenes, fearing Hiyakamaru may become a demon himself. After burying the dead, Hiyakamaru and Dororo continue their travel. A dark cloud containing a demon appears over a village, and the villagers hurriedly prepare a woman as a sacrificial bride to appease it. As Hiyakamaru and Dororo see the bridal parade traveling up the mountain, a wild boy, Saru, tries to stop the sacrifice. After the boy tells them the story of the demon, Dororo and Hiyakamaru agree to exterminate the demon. A dark cloud envelops them, and the demon appears as a large centipede. However, Hiyakamaru is unable to differentiate it from the cloud as they both show red to his vision, and it swallows the woman. Dororo and Saru devise a plan to create an explosion using the sulfurous gases emitted by the mountain, which sets the demon ablaze but has little effect. Dororo then jumps on demon's head and calls to Hiyakamaru, enabling him to locate and attack the centipede by sound, destroying it. The dark cloud dissipates and Hiyakamaru, Dororo, and the woman, who is still alive from being swallowed whole, fall into a water. Saru is relieved to find his sister and agrees to move into the village with her. 
Hiyakimaru regains his sense of smell and for the first time addresses Dororo by name. Dororo falls ill with fever and Hiyakimaru takes him to a temple for treatment. Later, Dororo recovers, but the priestess reveals to Hiyakimaru Dororo is actually female, calling Dororo a young girl after removing her clothes to wash them. Meanwhile, Daigo is told Hiyakimaru may be alive from a survivor of the attack on Mio's camp. A crab-like monster devours a man after destroying his boat. Meanwhile, the drab in the Daigo lands worsens while the Asakura clan gathering on their border. He visits the temple and finds more demon statues destroyed, and the demons inform him Hiyakimaru is still alive and is slowly retrieving the stolen pieces of his body. Daigo's son Tahamaru discovers his father is searching for a baby. Later, Tahamaru and his two bodyguards Mutsu and Hiyogo encounter a village where they speak of a monster in the lake which eats fishermen. He leads a group of villagers in their boats onto the lake and attacks and damages the monster, but it is too fierce, and they are forced to retreat. Tatamaru then has the villagers construct a trap, intending to lure the monster into a shallow channel where the water can be drained out. The plan works and Tatamaru, Mutsu, and Hyogo attack it together. However, the monster fights back and almost devours Hyogo, but at the last minute, Hiyakimaru arrives and slays it. Tatamaru is left wondering who the stranger is. Tatamaru learns Hiyakimaru's name as the two travelers arrive in the Daigo capital. There, they see a play depicting Daigo as a great slayer of demons protected by the Goddess of Mercy. Biwahoshi seeks the truth at the Hall of Hell, while Hiyakimaru and Dororo visit the remnants of Fort Bamon. It was built by Daigo and is supposedly cursed by a demon. They find remnants of a timber wall where the Asakura pin bodies of their enemies with arrows. They encounter a young boy, Sugoroku, who wishes to cross to the Asakura side and rejoin his family. Meanwhile, Tahamaru's bodyguards report the incident with Hiyakimaru to Daigo, who realizes his son is alive and decides to kill him and maintain the prosperity of his domain, ignoring his wife's pleas. Tahamaru overhears their exchange and later comes across a demented woman who was present at Hiyakimaru's birth. She tells him how the demons ate everything but left the boy alive. Night falls at Bamon, and a nine-tailed fox demon appears. While it attacks Hiyakimaru, Sukuroku uses the distraction to pass the wall with Dororo in pursuit. However, they are captured by Asakura sentries. The demon is eventually chased off by the arrows of a squadron led by Daigo himself, who then approaches Hiyakimaru. Hiyakimaru does not recognize his father and is confused when he sees demonic red in Daigo's soul. Daigo orders his archers to fire at Hiyakimaru, who flees. Meanwhile, Dororo and Sukuroku are held in an Asakura prison with other prisoners, but Dororo manages to escape. In the Daigo compound, Tahamaru confronts her mother about his brother's fate, but his father explains the bargain he made with the demons to save their land. Hiyakimaru appears and is seen by his mother and brother, but Daigo orders him killed. Tahamaru is horrified, but Daigo asks Tahamaru if he would be willing to sacrifice the land to save his brother. The Asakura start to kill their prisoners at the Bamon to provoke a war, and the Daigo army charges forward, attracting the fox demon. Lord Daigo arrives with his army and Tahamaru who has reluctantly accepted his father's decision and attacks Hiyakimaru. Hiyakimaru breaks Tahamaru's sword and damages his right eye and then kills the demon, which is sucked into the Bamon. Nuanakata arrives and begs forgiveness for her complicity in Daigo's bargain. She then stabs herself and her sacrifice causes her Goddess of Mercy statue to collapse the Bamon. Survivors of Sukuroku's village arrive and Sukuroku is reunited with his mother. Biwahoshi picks up Nuanakata's small, headless wooden statue of the Goddess of Mercy, which sacrificed its own head at Hiyakimaru's birth, so the child would not lose his head in his father's bargain with the demons, and its gentle green aura fades. Later, Hiyakimaru and Dororo visit an onsen where they encounter Biwahoshi and other children who see a map which appears on Dororo's back. Nuanakata is shown to have survived, but Tahamaru has been blinded in his right eye. In a flashback, Dororo's father, the bandit Hibikuro, drew a part of a map of the location to his hidden money onto the back of his wife, and the rest on Dororo's back, so they could retrieve it together later. Dororo memorized the map on her mother's back before she died. In the present, Biwahoshi and Hiyakimaru realize the map appears when Dororo's back heats up, which Biwahoshi says gives her some choices in life. Hiyakimaru continues his search for demons, unconcerned even when a huge baby-like monster grabs Dororo. They arrive at a burned-out temple, and the monster disappears as they encounter Sabame, the lord of the land, carrying a flower offering to the spirit who inhabits the site. He invites them to stay at his home, where he says the temple housed a nunnery which exploited children before it was struck by lightning and destroyed, killing everyone inside. That night, the travelers are attacked by a caterpillar-like monster, but when Hiyakimaru wounds it, a huge moth-like demon, Meimeyama, appears and carries it away. The moth lands near Sabame and transforms into a white-haired woman. 
After she tells Sabaim the food he provided for her children was too strong, he consoles her and promises to protect her and her children. Dororo visits Sabaim's prosperous village where everyone seems happy. She finds a rice storehouse deep in the forest but is pushed into the basement by the villagers. It is filled with the caterpillar monsters which menace Dororo, but the baby monster returns to save her. The monster bursts open, releasing the spirits of the children from the temple which Sabaim and the villagers had fed to Meimeonba after burning it down. Outside the village, Sabaim tells Hiyakimaru how he accepted the Meimeonba who fed on samurai and beasts to protect the village, and then took her as his wife. The Meimeonba moths emerge from their chrysalides and attack Hiyakimaru who fiercely fights back. However, the last one destroys Hiyakimaru's prosthetic leg and then sacrifices itself to set fire to the village. Meanwhile, Dororo burns down the storehouse, destroying the caterpillars and the village rice supplies, causing the villagers to fight among themselves over the remaining food. Hiyakimaru finds and kills the original Meimeyamba, which returns his spinal column to him. He and Dororo walk back through Sabaim's burned-out village where many villagers lie dead, including Sabaim. Dororo wonders if they did the right thing, but Hiyakimaru states his only concern is killing demons. Dororo and Hiyakimaru walk separate ways, but bandit named Itachi, who betrayed Dororo's father, finds her. Itachi is half of the map from Dororo's mother back and demands to see Dororo's half. She denies knowledge of a map, but Itachi and his men take her with them, believing she has memorized it. They travel for days, following Dororo's mother half of the map which Itachi discovered after he dug up her body. They arrive at Cape Akatsu where the treasure is located, but can't reach it without a boat. After failing to find boats at a nearby village which they believe was destroyed by bandits, they meet Shiranui, a one-armed youth who offers to take them across. They board two boats pulled by huge sharks, Jiramaru and Sabiramaru. Midway across, Shiranui reveals he fed his arm to the sharks, however they developed a taste for human flesh, so he then killed the villagers to feed them. On his signal, the sharks capsize one of the boats and devour the men on board. Not wanting them to gorge themselves, he leads Sabiramaru to watch the second boat until they come back later to eat. Disheartened, Itachi recounts how he and his men were exploited by his lord. Dororo berates them for giving up and jumps in the water as bait to lure Sabiramaru. On her signal, they pulled her up, and when the shark surfaces, they stab and kill it. They then paddle ashore at Kepikatsu. When Shirinui comes ashore to investigate, he is savagely beaten by the bandits. Itachi strips Dororo's clothes looking for the map and realizes Dororo is a girl while the heat of the fire reveals the map on her back. With the completed map, they tie up Dororo and leave, while Shirinui vows revenge. Elsewhere, as Hiyakimaru struggles to walk, he passes a monk who tells him of a man nearby who can give him a new leg. Jukai is adding limbs to the dead on a battlefield when a ghoul attacks, but Hiyakimaru appears and kills it. Back in his cave, Jukai is horrified when Hiyakimaru explains what his father did to him. Suddenly, a landslide blocks the entrance to the cave. While Hiyakimaru digs his way out, he reveals he is not alone as he remembers Dororo. Emerging from the cave, they find the fruit of a nearby demon tree producing more ghouls. Hiyakimaru slays them all until he eventually pierces the tree's heart and destroys it. At the Daigo compound, Nunakata recovers but Tahamaru leaves to kill a reported ghoul without visiting her. He and his aides find and wound a rat-like ghoul. Tahamaru then burns the building to kill both the ghoul and its progeny who are still alive inside, pledging his sword to defend Daigo land. When they return, Daigo sends Tahamaru and a small army to kill Hiyakimaru. Meanwhile, Hiyakimaru rows a small boat towards Cape Akatsu. Shirinui calls on the giant shark Jiramaru to eat Saburamaru's body and it evolves into a demon capable of moving onto land. It attacks Dororo but she is saved by Hiyakimaru who slays the demon. Hiyakimaru's left leg is restored. Meanwhile, Itachi finds a cave and two of his men rush in but are killed by booby-trapped explosives. Tahamaru and a fleet land on the shore in pursuit of Hiyakimaru and Tahamaru gives orders to leave no one alive. Several of Itachi's remaining men fall to Daigo Arrows and Dororo and Hiyakimaru come across a wounded Itachi. Hiyakimaru is attacked by Tahamaru, Mutsu, and Hiyogo so Itachi grabs Dororo and flees. High above, Shirinui detonates the booby trap bonds he removed in an attempt to kill everyone, killing himself and causing a landslide. Many of Tahamaru's men are killed and Hiyogo is badly wounded so they decide to withdraw assuming Hiyakimaru is dead. Meanwhile, Dororo and the mortally wounded Itachi fall into a cave created by the explosion and discover the treasure. Itachi dies after seeing it. Hiyakimaru finds Dororo who decides to leave the treasure hidden until she decides what to do with it. Hiyakimaru and Dororo seek the swordsmith to repair the swords in Hiyakimaru's prosthetic. Hiyakimaru refits the repaired swords and continues his journey with Dororo. 
Tatamaru and his aides observe misfortune befalling Daibo's villages, and since it started at the borders and is spreading inwards, they suspect the demons are upset Hiakamaru isn't dead. Back in his compound, Daigo realizes his deal with the demons has been revoked since the destruction of the Goddess of Mercy statue and the days of prosperity are over. Meanwhile, Hiyakamaru and Dororo encounter Dice Spot Saburota who is hunting a local demon that ate his mother. They lay in wait and a gigantic new appears. Hiyakamaru goes to fight it but is intercepted by Saburota who now delights in seeing the demon devour terrified travelers. During the fight, Hiyakamaru and Dororo fall down a rocky embankment and Dororo's arm becomes trapped. Hiyakamaru is unable to free her despite breaking his left prosthetic arm in subterranean water begins to rise. Suddenly, Biwa Hoshi appears and frees Dororo, though his sword is broken. Again, determined to regain his body, Hiyakamaru attacks and badly wounds the new. It eats Saburota in desperation, absorbing him into its body. Hiyakamaru finally slays it, however, no part of his body is returned to him even when he cuts the new to pieces, much to the horror of Dororo. Biwa Hoshi watches sadly as the brutality results in Hiyakamaru's aura gaining a red heart, thinking he has a heavy fate to bear. Hiyakamaru realizes he must confront Daigo to have his body fully restored. Hiyakamaru approaches Daigo territory and Dororo is sad in his single-minded desire to recover his body parts. They are recognized by a villager who notifies Daigo. Meanwhile, the situation worsens in Daigo territory, villages which have become diseased are burned and their inhabitants killed, able-bodied men are conscripted for the war against the threatening Asakura clan. Horses, including a nursing mother horse named Midoro, are requisitioned. Tamaru decides to take Mutsu and Hyogo to stop Hiyakamaru himself. They find Hiyakamaru and Dororo at a ravine littered with soldiers' bodies and attack him together. Hiyakamaru severs Mutsu's right arm and Hyogo's left arm and again cuts Tamaru's right eye, as Dororo looks on in horror at Hiyakamaru's savagery. Suddenly, a group of men sent by Daigo to protect their prince intervene. The leader sends Midoro loaded with explosives towards Hiyakamaru, killing the horse and blowing Hiyakamaru into the ravine. Dororo is captured by the villagers and Tamaru is subdued by a dart when he refuses to leave. Later, spirits possess Midoro's body parts, turning it into a flaming horse. Tamaru's group return home with Dororo while Dago prepares to repel an impending attack by the Asakura clan, planning to fight at Bamon. Hiyakamaru is enraged because Dororo has been kidnapped, his rage drawing the demon horse to him. Tamaru visits Hiyogo's sister Mutsu, who lost her right arm and is also weak from a disease she was hiding, but she refuses to see him as she won't risk infection. Meanwhile, Nuenakata frees Dororo in gratitude for providing companionship for son Hiyakamaru and leaves with him. Their boat is smashed in the strong current and they are rescued by Daigo refugees including Biwa Hoshi. Nuenakata decides to stay to help care for the sick and wounded. Mutsu leaves the compound badly ill, prompting Tamaru and Hyogo to go after her. Elsewhere, Hiyakamaru is joined with the demonic horse Midoro and is cutting a bloody sway through Daigo's soldiers, seeking Dororo. Mutsu staggers to the demon temple and offers herself to the twelfth and final demon to protect the land and its people. Tatamaru and Hyogo arrive to see her offer rejected. However, when the trio later intercept Hiyakamaru, their wounds have been healed by the demon. Mutsu and Hiyogo each bear one of Hiyakamaru's real arms and Tatamaru as his two eyes. Dago villagers near the border prepare for the impending war and Midoro's full runs away. Hiyakamaru attacks Tatamaru, Mutsu and Hiyogo to reclaim his eyes and arms. Meanwhile, Nunakata and Dororo arrive at the battle but are held back by Biwa Hoshi. Midoro attacks Mutsu and Hiyogo, but is distracted by the arrival of her foal and is wounded. Enraged, Midoro tears off Hiyogo's head and crushes Mutsu, but their bodies are controlled by the demon which uses their arms to fatally wound Midoro. On their deaths, Hiyakamaru's arms return to him, and he grabs the two sword blades that were in his prosthesis with his bare hands to keep fighting Tahamaru. Confused by emotions when he sees Nuenakata and Dororo approach, Hiyakamaru runs off with Tahamaru in pursuit. The villagers, Biwahoshi, Nuenakata, and Dororo debate the value of one life against the needs of many and conclude only what is gained by their own hands will last. At the border, Daigo leads his army forward, determined to defeat the Asakura and give meaning to his decisions. Hiyakamaru follows Tahamaru to the Daigo castle and their fight resumes. During the struggle, they knock over a candle stand, setting the castle on fire. The smoke alerts Dororo and Nuenakata, who are drawn by concern for the young brothers. Tahamaru and Hiyakamaru continue their fierce battle inside the burning Daigo castle, each believing it is their inherited domain. Meanwhile, Nuenakata leaves Biwa Hoshi and Dororo while she enters the castle through a hidden tunnel and meets Jukai. Above them, Hiyakamaru finally defeats Tahamaru but does not kill him. 
The demon with Hiyakamaru's eyes tries to take control of Taomaru, but he removes the eyes, which return to Hiyakamaru. After Hiyakamaru slays the demon, he becomes whole for the first time and Jukai gives him a newly carved Goddess of Mercy statue. Dororo and Hiyakamaru are reunited as the castle burns. Nuenakata tends to Taomaru as he dies in her arms and the castle collapses. Meanwhile, the last demon statue falls in the Hall of Hell and Daigo beats his army against the Asakura, losing many of his men. Later, Dororo proposes to retrieve the treasure to help the Daigo refugees while Hiyakamaru finds his father wounded but defiant in the Hall of Hell. However, when Hiyakamaru departs without killing him, leaving the Goddess of Mercy statue behind, Daigo realizes if he had not made the pact with the demons, Hiyakamaru had the ability to save his land. Hiyakamaru departs alone, leaving Dororo behind, knowing however that they will meet again in the future. In the final scene some years later, Dororo, a young woman, runs to greet Hiyakamaru who smiles as he turns to see her. The end. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. See you next time.